Hello, it's Mr Omar here and I'm going to give you a few quick tips and strategies for how to tackle the Language Conventions NAPPLAN work. In these questions, I have highlighted it so it won't look yellow, but what they're asking you to do is to look at the yellow, at the word that's got the circle around it and write the correct version of that word over in this box on the side. So, for instance, so you don't need to look at whether a tiger uses or it's, all of those words are fine. This is the only word you need to pay attention to and they give you the sentence so that you've got that word in context so you know which word it is that they've spelt wrong. And I will tell you right now that they spell the words wrong in a way that when you read them you think balance, that's right, that is what balance sounds like. So what you need to do is you need to really switch on your problem solving brain and say okay, which bits of this are, are probably right and which bits of it could be different. So if it's balance, if you listen to it, it's obvious the b a l is there, balance. So that bit's probably right. Then you might think, well, how else do you make a since sound? And it might be n-s-e, and that's a possibility. So that might be worth writing down with s-e to see if that looks right to you. Or you might think that balance at the middle, is that balance or balance? And as it turns out, this is b-a-l-a-n-c-e. But you really need to like, Move the word around in your mouth. You can't talk during these tests, but you can talk, you know, in your head and you can examine the word and because they will all, the, all the false spellings will look, will sound right. They just look wrong. So be analytical about it. Be careful and remember you're concentrating on the circled word, not other words. Okay, so this one again, thought. She thought about the problem for a long time. Now that thought isn't in fact a word. There is no word spelt thought like that. That is a made up spelling. So you need to remember how to spell thought. Now that thought is actually, that's probably the logical way to spell it there. But they're actually looking for the word um, thought that starts T-H-A-U-G-H-T. So it's a kind of counterintuitive spelling. And sometimes you're either going to know it or you're not. But concentrate on it because I promise you that's not how you spell thought. In this one here, this is the next level of question. This one's actually a bit harder. This doesn't tell you which one is the wrong word. So you need to look at it and you basically need to knock out them word by word. So you can say the, I'm certain that is spelt right. I'm not sure about overnight. I'm pretty sure about rainstorm. Flooded might be wrong. It might be one O. The is right and oval, I'm pretty sure, is right. So you look at your words and you read them one by one and basically check. And the thing here is that sometimes when you break it down into, into, into individual words, so overnight is that word and over is spelt O-V-E-R. So if part of the word is over, then it needs to be spelt like over. So sometimes pulling a word apart is a good way to work out how it should be spelt. But in this one, just again, treat it like a problem solving exercise and go through and investigate each word and say, is that one spelt right? The next one is actually, again, is seeing whether you can tell the difference between what you hear and what should be on the page. So I was in Brisbane last week. If I'd known you were there, I would have caught up with you. Now, when we're speaking just casually, what we think we're saying is would of. But in actual fact, what we're saying is would have is the standard English. Now, none of these options are would have. And it's certainly not this one here, would of. People say that, but in fact they're saying it, they're, they're mangling it in their speech. It sounds like would have, but it's in fact would have. Would have, and that little apostrophe is for, is for the shortened version of have. So again, think of what the word of the meaning is. Because in fact, I would of caught up with you, doesn't make sense. Would of what? Would have is what it is. So would off is just a complete trick. Wouldn't, just if you hear that in your head, I wouldn't caught up with you. That's just plain wrong. But again, you can say it to yourself in your head. And the correct answer is would have, because that's short for would have. So again, put each one in and see how each one of them works and be really thoughtful about it. When looking at a question like this, it is in fact asking you which one should end with a question mark, but it is actually asking you which one of these is a proper question. So when it says how amazing to see a comet, that's not actually a question, it's just saying it's very amazing. How to make a kite is just an instruction, and how we did it is not important. 
Uh, that's also not a question. But how will you make it? And if you say it to yourself in your head, and you're not allowed to talk during these tests, but if you say it in your head, you'll hear that, how will you make it? And your voice goes up for a question. Whereas how amazing to see a comet is your voice just stays steady, although sometimes we show excitement by going up at the end too. But I guess you need to look at each one and think, what's the answer to it? So how amazing to see a comet doesn't really require an answer. How to make a kite doesn't require an answer. How we did it is not important. And how will you make it? Oh, well, I'll make it by. So that one does require it. So when they're asking you about punctuation marks, think what what are they? What would be the next part of speech? What does this actually connect to? And finally, this one I want to show you is for each one, the number here, 40, means which of these words next to 40 would fit into that sentence. So the French scientist Louis Pasteur made one of his most significant discoveries after the age of 60, his age of 60, an age of 60, or that age of 60. So you've got to read it through and say which one would make most sense after the age of 60, after his age of 60, after an age of 60. Um, I'm, I think it's the age of 60. That feels right to me as a native English speaker, but the um, answers are online too, so you can check that. And again, he turned his attention something a straight disease. He turned his attention of a straight disease, over a straight disease, by a straight disease, or a strange disease, or to a strange disease, which I think is the correct answer, called rabies. So for each one you're going through and you're saying which of those options would sit best in that sentence. So there's some strategies for you to keep in mind when you're doing the NAPLAN tests, but treat every question as a puzzle, give it your full attention and work your way through it.